There's a lot of things in the world that we don't know about and people want to learn more in the finance world. And one of the biggest components of the finance world nowadays is private equity. And most of us don't know much at all about private equity, probably because it's being kept private. Uh, but here today, we have somebody who is an expert in the field and also recently had a run-in with a big private equity company. It's been in the news. He's an economist and a professor at the Said Business School in Oxford. Everybody welcome Ludovic Filippo, a.k.a. Ludo. Yay! <laughs> I like your cheer. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, so you study private equity. That Would you say that that is your biggest focal point as a professor, as a yeah, human yeah, being? I, I, it's, 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 I, I, I do that for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I do that all day. <laughs> I, I, I teach only private equity courses. I, everything I do is private equity. Have you gone mad only studying private equity it's 24 weird, right? hours a day? Like, like I'm, I'm, I'm very impatient and, and um, hyperactive. And, and so to think that I've spent the last 18 years on, on one topic, it, it's, it's quite crazy. But, but so there are different aspects of private equity. Uh, like right now I'm writing a, a, a paper about care homes during the COVID-19 crisis and comparing whether you know, the ones run by private equity did any different or, or things like that. So, you, you have papers that are quite different. The kind of things I do are quite different. Some papers are, you know, another paper I'm working on at the moment is more technical about modeling the commitment feature when you when you invest in private equity. And so that's a, a, a more of a math uh, pro, uh, paper uh, about, uh, you know, uh, with, with some dynamic optimizations, et cetera. But now let's back up a little bit because for the viewer who has no idea what private equity is, uh, you're in an elevator with a normal person you have about 10 to 15 seconds to tell them what private equity is. What do you, what do you tell them? I, I walk them through a street. I say, just come out in the street and about one uh, in two shops you're gonna see is, is owned by a private equity fund. So really? if you walk out like about, about any restaurant chain would be owned by private equity. Um, nowadays, quite a lot of hospitals are owned by private equity. Uh, airlines, car rentals, um, amusement parks, uh, airports, you, you, you name it. And so um, I, I do it with my students in Oxford on my first slide, the first course, that the water we are drinking here is Thames water and that's owned by private equity. Um, when you walk out of the school on your left hand side, there is something called a quick fit, which is like for cars, uh, like to change tires and so on, that's owned by private equity. And the restaurants you see in front of you, Pret a Manger, the anti chain, is private equity. The one next door, Pizza Express, is private equity, and so on and so forth. So I walk them through the street. Boots in the UK is, is a pharmacist owned by private equity. Most pharmacists are so uh, in the US are owned by private equity. I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we just yeah. do have to back up just a little bit because you had 10 seconds in an elevator, and instead you walked us out of the elevator and said, hey, look, everything here is owned by private equity, or yeah, one, out of, half, yeah. one out of two, half. You said, so yeah. that's about a true stat, one out of two businesses or you know entities it's, it's controlled by private equity. controlled by private equity okay that still doesn't tell us what private equity is so, so we do need to understand who they are who are these people who are controlling half of the world so so they would be so think of them as mainly mba students when it comes to the larger end of private equity it's actually the statistics is half of the partners are mba uh, have an MBA degree and half of the people with an MBA degree have it from Harvard University. So if you wanted to think about who's really te technically what are these guys doing effectively, effectively this MBA from Harvard are sitting on the boards of companies that they and they 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 got into control of these companies sitting on their boards using other people's money. Yes. Right? So and, yeah, so and their goal is to make as much money as possible for the people who gave them the money and they will take a big stake of it and so make money for themselves. So the goal okay. of the game is yeah. making as much money as possible. So in a sense, private equity is like Kickstarter if Kickstarter went to Harvard. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of already told us why we should care about private equity because they essentially own half of all businesses. Um, is there a more uh, direct way that they affect us on a daily basis? 
Well, so, so I mean, it, it's not half of the businesses in America because they tend to be in smaller businesses. They tend to be a more in this. It was like when you walk in the street, most of these chains are, are, are like in the streets are, are owned by private equity, but the, their, their share of the US economy is still only like five, five to 10 percent or something like that. They, they are in the US about 10 million people that work for private equity. So why should, should, should you care? You, you should care at, from, from many aspects. So uh, you should care if you're an employee, for example, because chances are your company is controlled by a private equity firm and you want to know how these guys work. Um, it's important that, because you said it's, it's terrifying. It, 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 it can be great to have very talented people with an MBA from Harvard sitting on the board of company and running it in a much more professional way, potentially, than, than non-Harvard MBA. So, so it can bring a, a lot of good. Um, so you, 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 as an employee, you may care. Uh, as a customer, you may care. So for example, there are some studies that look at whether you know, when private equity takes over supermarkets, do they increase prices? Would, do, they, do they reduce the, the choice uh, of products? Like these, these sorts of things. So uh, I, if you go to hospitals, does it matter that your hospital is private equity owned or not? If you go to a care home, does it matter? Um, do, they, do they run their businesses different? Is it, is it a different deal for customers? Sure. Whatever you do in life, more or less, you, you, you want to know how practically works. Practically owns like TV channels and, 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 and media and so on. So even you, in your job, uh, knowing what practically does, you know, recently there was a big thing with Taylor Swift, where, you know, practically bought all of the rights, all of the copyrights of, this, of her songs. Um, you, even if you're Taylor Swift, you want to know, and she got to know, how private equity works. So even musical artists are owned by private equity. <laughs> it's a Taylor Swift. Is Justin uh, Bieber controlled by private right equity? Yeah. Is Sorry? Bieber's controlled by is Justin Bieber controlled by private equity? Because that would, I, I that would explain checked. a lot of his songs. I haven't checked. Okay. You, you're saying that private equity could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing. It depends on the actions or choices of these individuals who are controlling these enterprises. Now, of course, you said the prerequisite, aside from going to Harvard, is these people they need to know how to raise money. They need to be good at private equity. But does that necessarily mean that they are good at running a business? The goal of the game is pretty simple. Would be, Sammy, you're telling me you have a great idea for a show, okay? Mm -hmm. You're going to put Which all your savings of. on the table. You're going to put all your savings on the table. And, and if your show works, I'm going to multiply that by 1,000, okay? So I will cover you in gold if it works. And if it doesn't work, you have lost everything you have. Okay, so do you want a deal? And I can make it happen, but do you want that deal? And so that's pretty much how practically works is that I can make you extremely rich, like beyond what you can imagine, but if it works, okay? So all the people you're going to attract are people, you have the best lawyers working practically, the best accountants, the, buy, the best tax people, the best at everything. So, and, and they will make tons of money only if the business that they took over they, they, they control when they leave it is worth more than when they wait, came in, right? They, they take, if they can do it on a house, they, they go and control a house, they organize repairs and everything. And then when they sell this house, it needs to be sold for a higher price so that then they can get very rich. So they are very good at that. And they do that extremely well. One issue is that they, 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 they keep most of the gain to themselves, maybe not give enough back to the pension funds to give them the money and so on, which is something I've, I've, I've worked a lot on. But, but are they good at increasing the value of the business? Yes, they're like the best at that. Like there is no way you can beat them. But, but is that necessarily good for employees? Is that necessarily good for customers? Is that necessarily good for society? That's a very difficult question, right? And what we find is that it depends on sectors, apparently. So we have studies that look at practically in the restaurant industry. And, you know, when people want to make money in restaurants, they should not run restaurants to the ground. So what we see they do is that they are much more professional. They make sure the restaurants are clean. They get better hygiene ratings in the U.S., et cetera, when they are taken over by practically because they want to sell these things at a higher price. So they need to make sure they have good ratings on TripAdvisor and so on and so forth. It seems as if when there is some level of accountability, they are held to a certain standard. But for instance, you said the restaurant industry, they have to make things better because in the restaurant industry, there's Yelp, right? <laughs> the, the one weapon against private equity or keeping them in check is Yelp, right? I mean, there's no Yelp for hospitals. There's no Yelp for schools. So in a sense, a star rating system is a way to counteract 
the actions of private it's, equity? It, it's a very good it, it's a very good thought. Um, we don't have quite the answer to that. There is a wave of paper now looking at, at private equity and society societal impact. It, it's actually something pretty rare, pretty recent. I mean, the last five years, people have started to study these questions. In the past, people were more interested in is, is private equity increasing the profit of companies, increasing margins or things like that. But the last five years, a, a lot more about the society impact. And I think that the, what, the, the picture we're starting to see emerging is that it is indeed what you say. The way we would say it as economists is that it may depend on the competitive environment. Uh, so if you are in a very competitive environment, having some private equity guys is good because these guys are just, you know, they, they are held accountable, like you said. And, and their genius is gonna, is gonna, and their talent is gonna, is gonna mean that they're gonna improve things. And if they're in a non-competitive environment where they can kind of like do whatever they want, then they're gonna squeeze people and, and, and that's tricky. But in most environments, we don't know how competitive it is. So the news today in the newspaper was uh, Blackstone, the largest private equity firm in the world, has uh, bought a lot of buildings in New York, which are uh, uh, social residential buildings. And the question is, what are they going to do? Are they going to start like, you know, not repairing the building so that people give up and leave the building so then they can rent it on market prices and make tons of money because, you know, these are all buildings in Brooklyn and the like. And so if low income people walk out and, and then and you can put this building at their market value, you make a huge amount of money. You say that private equity can be good. It can be bad. Now, what if there was no private equity in this world? Would, would we be losing? What would a world with no private equity be like? Maybe some companies would be less professionally run, indeed, right? Because if, if you have people that are, you know, if you don't have the best at everything, um, you would have some companies that are uh, uh, more badly run. There would be certainly less debt on companies. And so you, you, you have a number of very big brands in the U.S., where non retailers in particular, that had all this debt that practically uh, put on them. Like I explained earlier, they borrow most of the money to, to, to acquire a company. And so this debt is put on, on the company. Uh, and, and so a number of retailers went bankrupt, uh, very famous ones in the US, uh, many of them like Toys R Us and, and others. And, and it is believed that without, if they wouldn't have had all this debt, they wouldn't have gone bankrupt. So a world without, without private equity would have probably still Toys R Us alive. Um, You're telling me that have... private, equity, private equity killed Toys R Us? That was my favorite store growing up. So it, it, it's always hard to prove causality because in economics, you cannot observe you know, the counterfactual. It, the, the test would be absent this amount of, of debt, was Toys R Us able to pay their bill or all of their other bills? And it looks like, yes, Toys R Us would have been able to pay all of their bills if we wouldn't have been for that debt, uh, 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 but they had to repay. Now, when, when, so, 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 so then, you know, the simple answer of the simple test would be then Toys R Us was killed by excess debt and, 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 and that was put on there by private equity. This is, yeah, this is, I now do not like private equity. Um, you've officially- oh, But there are different types as well changed. of private equity, right? So you have, you have a, the, the, what we call leverage buyouts, which is what Toys R Us was, uh, but you have also private equity is also venture capital. So that's the, private equity, all your favorite websites and tech and everything is, was all funded by private equity. So Google and Zoom and like all these guys are, are all private equity. So this conversation yeah. right now, this conversation right now is being owned by private equity. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And what is the difference between venture capital and private equity? So it's the same mindset. It works the exact same way. It's still a bunch of people. They're not so much from Harvard. So in, in venture capital, you have more people from Stanford. <laughs> But huh. uh, and MIT, but 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 it, it's the exact same setup, um, ex except that you tend to instead of targeting companies that are like Toys R Us, more bigger companies, more mature companies, you target nascent companies. So you target people like at the beginning of Google when they say we think we have a search engine, we think we can expand on that, and then and then these practical guys come in and say, okay, I'm going to sit on your board and I'm going to help you. But for that, I'm gonna like you know take a stake of your of your business. Like if it works out well, I'm gonna keep, take a, a big stake of that, and I'm gonna help you financially because I know all these pension funds and the like, so I can raise all this money for you to help you expand. And because I have a network like you could never dream of, like I know everybody uh, on earth. 
like for your business, I know who you should talk to. There is a guy in Sweden that did something like that. I I I I I'll put you in touch with that guy. And then another one in Australia that I know that that could help you for another aspect of your business. So the private equity guys are going to come in, sit on your on the board of these things and companies, and then like put use their network to be, put you in touch with the right people. They're going to raise money and to give you money to to expand, etc. And again, if it works out, they're going to make tons. You're going to make some money. Um, and the obsession is trying to get this company worth as much as possible. Same thing. It, it's less controversial than intra capital because you think like, oh, that's not scary. That sounds actually pretty cool and, and angelic. But but you can also have in venture capital people that are fairly reckless because you would have people that you know if they can cheat to make more money, they would cheat to make more money. So, um, but but in venture capital, we there is not as much concern about over stakeholders and, and, and the damage you can do to others because these are small nascent companies. So, you know, how much damage can you do? So it's not like a Toys R Us. You take Toys R Us, put tons of debt on it. If it worked, you would have made tons of money. And if it fails, then people don't get toys. Yeah, I mean, just uh, go, again, going back, I, I mean, how evil is that? Taking toys from children. Um, yeah. but, but <laughs> that's how evil private equity can get. But but and, and you, know, you mentioned that venture capital tends to be from Stanford. That's very interesting. So. We have venture capitalists tend to be from Stanford and then private equity tend to be from Harvard. I went to UC Berkeley Haas School of Business. Do I even stand a chance in this game? So, so Berkeley has, has, has some people in venture capital. But Berkeley people traditionally are not too keen on leverage buyout. Leverage buyout is really like, it's, 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 it's capitalism on steroids. Like right. it, it's the ultimate, if you think like, you know, the ultimate capitalist is, is, is private equity, right? Because this is exactly yeah. where it is. It's like the rule of the game here is to make money and as we are obsessed with making money, there are some businesses we make great because to, to make money, we need to make a great business. And there are some other businesses where to make money, we're going to take a huge risk. And then if it doesn't work, then it's all the people who pay the losses and, and a bit us, but, but a lot I would of just, people as well. I would just like to give a shout out to UC Berkeley for teaching us ethics in the first year. So um, <laughs> that is something we, we that have, we take We have good ethics course too. Good. Um, I believe no, it. I believe, at the science school. Good. Yeah. Um, no, it's, 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 it's important. I mean, the, the, no, more and more we have it courses at business school um, because, because um, we, we need to get this, this idea uh, uh, into people's mind that you, you are not being stupid if there is a way to make more money and you don't pursue it because you feel it is not right. Right. Well, well mm -hmm. it, you have this mantra that says, like, you know, if the goal is to maximize profits, if you don't maximize it, you're being stupid. And, 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 and as long as it's legal, then, then, then you, know, you would be stupid. And so it, it is good, but more and more nowadays, I think people are thinking, well, you know, it, it, it's not enough that it is legal. And, and most of things, it's unclear what the law is saying anyway. Hamilton Lane is a private equity company. You criticize them, uh, you know, which I'd kind of like to know what you said specifically about them. And they retaliated by alleg allegedly, we don't, we don't know this for sure, drawing you in a cartoon and uh, basically make, you know, saying a hypothetical scenario using a different professor's name and making fun of you. And you strongly believe that it was you, uh, but they denied it. Um, so yeah, so, yeah. So, uh, a few caveats. So, so first, they're not really a private equity firm. They are a consultant. So okay, they are. It 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 is like the people who are who are in the business of selling tobaccos, and and mm -hmm. and, and 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 then they explain to the world that tobacco is good for them. Okay, so so they are they're in the business of selling private equity to pension funds and and others, right? So that's their business. So their business depends on selling that product. So they come up with all kinds of you know statistics and graphs that makes it look like it's amazing okay it's just like tobacco is amazing for you okay 100 percent of people who smoke cigarettes have a good time yeah exactly <laughs> exactly that kind of thing okay i never commented on them i never said anything about them i've i've never done anything okay i i i, I they are mentioned in my book it is it's actually good good things i say in my books like we want neutral to good so I've never said anything negative about them or any other firm. I've never named the firm and said something negative about them. I, <laughs> I, 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 I do research. I comment about trends in the industry and aggregate data. So I've never done anything like that. But what I have explained was that the, the, the deal for these pension funds and the like is not as good as what it looks. 
and there are a number of tricks that are used to make it look better than, than it is. And the, here are the tricks. And once you unpack these tricks, then it looks more like a billionaire factory. The, the deal is rough. And, mm -hmm. and, and some people are getting very rich, the guys who sell per equity and the guys who are uh, 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 doing per equity. So I never named them or anything like that. But that kind, that paper I wrote called The Billionaire Factory was downloaded 20,000 times on SSRN.com in a few months. It circulated about everyone uh, in the industry uh, uh, have received it, as apparently. It was covered in the media, et cetera. So anybody in the industry has seen that paper, has read that paper. And so whenever these guys would walk into someone saying, hey, why don't you buy more product equity? Look at our funky charts. And then people will say, yeah, but there is this paper by this prof and he's saying that this is fluff, okay? Like, this, you know, and so they, they must have got, you know, annoyed by being told every five minutes, look, there's a guy saying, like, Yo, you know, these are all tricks, okay? And he explained to us your tricks, okay? And so, so then they must have been annoyed by that. And, and I think there is so, certainly probably a bit of arrogance when you, when you are that rich. I think that many, there are some rich people that are, that are, that are modest, but some people that come like like I'm into lane out of nowhere very quickly become very quickly rich without any you know I don't know if they have that much skills. Um, so suddenly maybe you have some arrogance in that instead. You think you're on top of the world, nothing can touch you. And so they thought it was okay to have some fun. Um, and <laughs> what they did was then they 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 did this this dialogue between someone they called Taylor Swift, but they didn't call her Taylor Swift. It's Baylor Swift or something like that. Okay. And, and, and saying that Taylor Swift had, you know, had some deal with private equity this year and she learned a lot about it. And that was directly referring to Taylor Swift, you right. know, trouble with private equity. And, um, and then there was this professor Pluto and Pluto ad hoc. And, and, and Pluto is, is pretty close to Ludo. And Pluto ad hoc in French means like that you are rather ad hoc, meaning like you are just like a random guy. And they make the professor <laughs> say things like, oh, you know, I, I just make up conclusions. No, I, I, I first write the conclusion, and then I make up data to fit my conclusions and things like that. So they accuse me of, of, of manufacturing data. They, they, they accuse me of-, of They accused of you of doing the same thing that you accused them of doing, basically. I've manufacturing never accused of manufacturing data. I've showed the tricks that people can, can, okay. can apply to make Manipulate. things better. Manipulating um, and, data. And, and then yeah. they say that, you know, I, I first write my conclusions and then and and, and then and then I I, I invent data. Uh, uh, again, in my papers, there is not there is not it, it's about the, the, the methodology. So it's about, you know, if you want to obtain answer A, this is how you do it. If you want to obtain answer B, this is how you do it. And 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 and, it, and it's not about I'm not selling anything. I don't have anything to sell. So so I'm 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 a teacher, so I, I explain yeah. to people how things work. But but but, it, but essentially you know, it's kind of like, let's say there's a, a, a guy who, who's not a magician, but has been studying magic, the whole, you, you know, you, you've been studying magic your whole life, you're a professor in magic, you go to all the magic shows in the world, you watch David Copperfield, you know, you, you go to every, every magic show imaginable, and then you write a, a, a paper on it that shows all of the tricks on what That's the right, magicians yeah. do when they, you know, saw the, the audience member in half and what they're really doing, you know, where the rabbit actually is. You publish it, it gets 22,000 downloads, which is fantastic, by the way. Congratulations. That's amazing. And uh, suddenly, David Copperfield finds out about this and, you know, and he's upset. And he <laughs> and makes yeah, you because disappear. And he makes people disappear. Are, he just oh, make you disappear. <laughs> yeah. Well, he turns you into a bird and calls you Pluto. Um, That's right. So, yeah. So, so, so they drew, a, they drew this cartoon. It was, it was of, a, of a bird, right? It was a bird. Uh, well, it's, a bird? it's a duck. I, I don't know if it's a duck, a duck, a duck, but yeah. actually it's, it's the, the duck is the main, is the main animal in my, I, I come from a farm. I grew up on a, on a small farm and, and the main agriculture around me is, is duck. So the fog wow. now and all these things like would come from my region. And so, so they re the they actually place. researched you and were trying to make fun of you. I don't know if they did on purpose, but 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 that was pretty clever. <laughs> I mean, there's a number of references there that are like pretty amazing. So Professor Pluto, it, yeah. like most students call, call me Professor Ludo, and so they call yeah. me Professor Pluto, and then they say you know the Pluto ad hoc. Uh, they refer they refer to France like twice. Um, right. Like you know they they write in French. They make me say something in French. So if you narrow it down to how many people are professor are studying poetically and can speak French, you're already down to a sample of right. <laughs> down to a sample right. of one. Right. Uh, and and, and you, you bring everything else, it's absolutely impossible that it was anyone else. But yeah. 
I have three final questions for you um, because this has all been so informative and I think just the average viewer has gotten a lot out of this already. Somebody who didn't know anything about private equity. First of all, uh, you know, I'm, I'm an average guy. I have some money. Can I invest in private equity? No, but you are probably are already without knowing. So you, you, you may have a pension uh, somewhere, somehow. And so that pension money might very well be in private equity. It's almost surely part of it is in private equity. Um, so so, so you, you, you can have some indirect exposure. Um, if, if, you are, if you don't have more than like one or $10 million, it's, very, it's feasible to invest in private equity, but it would be very cumbersome. It, it, it's almost impossible. So uh, my next question is, uh, average person, um, you know, you already told us what private equity is and your thoughts on it. What should we know? What should we take away uh, about private equity? Like, what is the main thing that we should be that, aware that of? You, or no? That you should be informed, that you, that, that, that you should buy my book, Private Equity Laid Bear. Um, buy, okay, and, so buy Ludo's book. And, that's what it is. Yep. Now, number one, subscribe to my podcast series. Okay, number two. Um, so I, I, I think, yeah, to try to get educated, you need to know how they work because they are everywhere in your life. And, 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 it, and it is a problem if, if people say, oh, but it's, it's finance, it sounds boring, it sounds bad or good or whatever, but I, I'm not interested. And it's my bias as a finance teacher. I think it's such an important element of life that you need to know about. Fantastic. So be, and we be informed, be educated. Be informed. And we, we, but by the way, we'll plug your book and your podcast in the- And careful uh, in, of your sources, okay? If, if, if you want to know more about tobacco's uh, uh, effect on health, don't, don't go maybe to a tobacco seller. Don't go to Slamilton Bain uh, Consulting. And um, if you hear of a professor Pluto, don't trust them. They're not a real professor. Just a kind of a follow-up of that same question. So, so, you know, given that it's important for us to be informed, what can we all do as a society to make private equity better or make it the best that it can be for all of us? So once you are informed, I can, I, I guess, but, but in the US it'd be tricky because I guess the usual route would be, okay, you, you, can, you can talk to your senator, you can lobby senators, you can lobby your pension fund, you can, you know, once you have the information, then you can tell your pension fund, look, I, I, I don't want you to just hire a consultant and do whatever they say when they have such bias incentives to sell you an expensive product. And, and, uh, and you go to your senator and say, you know, I want a law like they passed in, the, in, in, in California following some of my work uh, saying, you know, we need to have transparency of fees so that we know how much different uh, uh, people charge for different financial products so that like it's clear to everyone how much things cost and so on. Once you're better informed, you can lobby your, your uh, uh, representatives and, and, and your pension fund and, and, and the like, or the university endowments you, you, and, 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 and the like. So, so, so I, I think that, again, the route is to be informed, and after that, it comes a bit more naturally. In the U.S., the problem is that most elections depend on money that is being raised, and the, money, the number one contributors to politicians in the U.S. right now are private equity professionals. It's actually the number one contributors to politicians. So, you know, you can lobby the politicians uh, for some things, but if it's private equity who pays their campaign... Then... You're already beat. Yeah, they've, they've, already, they've already outnumbered you. So but at least uh, yeah. if you are informed and you know the situation and you know who they are and that they are paying for some politicians more than others and things like that, then you know maybe you can you can vote a bit. Like so, so, so then maybe maybe a, another strategy is to look up your politi uh, your your local politician, whoever your senator is, see how much they've been bought out by which different private equity companies, and uh, call them out, tweet tweet about it, <laughs> um, because that might get their attention. I'm writing a paper, for example, right now on the question of how is it as an employee to be working for a private equity firm versus not, right? So one mm. of these things that 10 million people in the US working for private equity, is it a good thing for them or not? And we have scrapped uh, um, um, Glassdoor uh, and we have thousands of reviews that talk about private equity and how people feel about the acquisition and, and the new sponsorship or control. And, and, and we use advanced uh, language uh, uh, analysis tools to take out some themes and see what is it that people complain or are happy about when practically comes into their company and, and the like. So just following what you said, if people put more things on, on, on things like Glassdoor, thinking about, oh, I have a new owner, this owner is this type of that type, 
or, you know, and even within Pro-Tech, we have some very good guys. We have in our data people that whenever they take over a company, employees are happier. And you have some right. guys that whenever they walk in, people are upset. Um, those, and, those, and, the good ones so, are the ones who went to Berkeley. Yeah, the good ones are the ones who went to Berkeley. I mean, but Berkeley has a very big social tradition, so, so I wouldn't be surprised if that you know, came out <laughs> in the data. Um, but but you, 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 if you indeed put more on Glassdoor, if you're better informed and you put reviews in Glassdoor saying, you know, the, 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 I, I see what these guys are doing and I understand what they are doing and I can explain and I can voice it and I can do some, you know, that can take you a long way indeed, right? Um, wow. so, so yeah, maybe that's one of the things that people can do. When more they're informed, apps. Just to yeah, so we need more apps in which people can, um, you know, express their opinions. And, I, you know, I think on. they exist. I, I don't think it's a new business niche. I think the, the apps already exist and people can then just use the existing I, ones. To, uh, I think we can use more. I mean, like, you know, like we said, there's Yelp for most businesses, but there's okay. not there, like there's not you don't have one that's specific for hospitals. Okay, well, uh, maybe, maybe you know, you, you need to call a venture capitalist to raise some. That's money what I was going to say. That's you, you. You took my joke, Ludo. Thank you so much. The joke was, we need more apps so that people can keep the the uh, private equity in check. So to get that app, we'll need some money. We'll call the private equity, and then we'll be back full circle. That I'm was the joke. I'm very sorry for burning it, the line. It's it was okay. You're a bit too big. It was. It was. It was clear. Yeah. yeah, you're. 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 You're a natural comedian. You just plagiarized. Uh, so. <laughs> I didn't translate it in French. Yeah. Exactly. But but this has been such a pleasure. The last thing I want to ask you, I know you're a fan and connoisseur of wines. Okay. If you had 30 seconds to a minute to describe private equity or what you feel is important about private equity using a wine analogy, <laughs> what would you say? Uh, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> we'll have to cut here. Um, <laughs> you can, um, we can re reconvene, you know, in 48 hours if you want to come up with it, but I'm sure no, you can I, come I, up with it. So I have it, I'm yeah. gonna, I, yeah. but I'm going to be very rude then. Um, no, it's fine. I would say it's the difference between Australian wine and French wine for most of it. I'm just going <laughs> to slightly caricature. I mean, and even French, I'm going to take like French wine from my region, like the Languedoc and Gaillac, what we call the Southwest. So, if, if, if you buy a, a, an Australian wine, typically, uh, blindly, it is more pleasant to drink, okay? It's, it, it's, it's nicer. But to get to this, more, this nicer wine that you're willing to pay more for, okay, then, you know, maybe they have you some tricks, okay? They, they, they use, you know, you know, you can, you can create any kind of aroma in wine, okay? You can just like drop mm -hmm. it in, you know, like you can do anything you want, okay? You can right. recreate a tannin sensation, you can eliminate the tannin, you can do anything you want, okay? And in, the, in Southwest uh, uh, French wines, we just be raw, okay? They would just be like what, what they are supposed to be. And so they are not like for non-connoisseur or something, they're gonna be a bit rough, they're gonna be a bit heavy, and they're gonna be a bit, you know, and, but they are un untampered, right? Uh, and so, so I would say that's, 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 that's the difference. So, so private equity will know how to make things taste very good for you, but they feel good so that they can make more money out of you. Uh, and, and, and the French version would just be, you know, like uh, you get the real thing. That's amazing. And I, I just uh, on Google, an article popped up from an Australian wine company that has you depicted as a kangaroo. Um, <laughs> that's actually, a great. Ana yeah, private equity is getting into wine actually big time. So so it was, there, there was an attempt of, of taking control of the largest wine manufacturer in Australia by, by Blackstone, the largest private equity firm. Fantastic. Well, I'm only going to drink French wines from now on because they're for the people. And uh, I'll put that on Yelp. By the people the, for the people. By the people for the people. And, and, and the, yeah, Southwest French wine. And that's another example. There's not a Yelp for wines. We need a yeah, wine Yelp. Vivino. You can follow me on Vivino. Really? Okay, of Vivino. course you would know about it. I think there is an app for everything. I'm very sorry. I'm, I'm pretty sure for there, hospitals, there's got to be one too. <laughs> there probably is, but it's not popular enough. We that's need right. uh, so, more. So we your need... business idea is to make these apps popular. And then we need competitive apps because I don't like Yelp and we need a, a, a site to review Yelp. We need an app, an app reviewing site. Do we have that? We, I mean, we need an app to review the apps. So, um, so fantastic. Uh, we'll plug your book. We'll plug your podcast. Anything else you want to share with the viewers before we go? No, no, I'm good. It was a pleasure to be with you. Yeah. What a pleasure. Thank you so much, Ludo. And, um, you know, have a fantastic, uh, rest of your day, year, everything. 
<laughs> Same to you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Yes.